as we welcome ourselves to the practice. Notice your attitude. Do you have an attitude of welcoming yourself to the mat, to the practice? It's easy to be easy to be welcoming to other people. How receptive of it and that feeling state of welcoming are you to yourself? Bring your hands to your heart, Anjali Mudra. Attitude is the first, first of three A's in Anasara. And it's a constant checking in. Where am I? How am I feeling about this? And you know what? You don't have to shift it. You don't have to be like, oh, I got to be better about this. Just recognizing how you're feeling about something that's the beginning, the shift begins because it's a constant flow between complementary opposites. That's just life. Release your hands, open your eyes. All right, let's take a big breath up together and exhale, arms down. Yeah, so standing in your own presence, connecting with your feet on the floor, like, yeah, saying, yeah, I got feet. They are touching the ground. One more time, big breath, reaching up. And let's work out our feet together. So standing on your left foot, right foot forward, I probably look opposite of you. Stay with right left cues. Yeah, and then roll to with your right foot forward, roll to the pinky edge of your foot. Yeah, and then roll back onto your heel. So now your toes in the air. It might feel like a little bit of a hamstring calf stretch. Roll to the inner edge of your foot. And you're probably gonna have to knock your knee in, maybe turn your pelvis, right? Do what you have to do to get to the big toe edge, inner edge of your foot. And then roll to the tippy toe of your foot. So there's gonna be changes, right? Throughout the rest of your body to make these shifts in the foot, ready? Pinky toe edge, what changes do you have to make? Do you have to sink a little lower? Do you have to rise a little taller? Yeah, pinky toe edge down, heel down. Toes up in the air, so changing, yep. And changing again, big toe edge. What do you have to change? Yep, and then on your tippy toes. One more time, faster, pinky toe, edge, yep. Even the outer heel down, heel, toes in the air, like a little hamstring, calf stretch. Inner edge of the foot, what do you have to change? Let it change, maybe pelvis has to shift, butt has to stick out, right? on your tippy toes, heels up. Okay, come to standing. So you just rolled a little bit through the edges of your feet. Drop your arms, feel, feel right, left, just from that very simple articulation. Shall we do the second side? Yeah, it's nice, right? All right, so soften down a little bit, step your left foot forward. Take your time feeling your way through, right? So there might be positions that you go, oh, I don't know, I gotta figure out how to adjust. So go to your pinky toe edge, outer heel. Shift to heel down, toes up. So this, we would often think of this as like a classic back line stretch through the lower leg and upper leg. Yeah. Now roll and find the big toe edge of your foot. You're going to have to make some shifts and change. How do you feel about that? Like, what do you got to do? So things don't feel weird in other joints. Go to your big toe ball joint, baby toe ball joint, heel up in the air. So that's you climbing stairs. Let's go again. Pinky toe edge. Breathe, heel. Toes in the air. Big toe edge. Change, change, change. This is a weird one, it's awkward. Heel up, toes down, a little prance position. All right, last round through. Take your time or speed it up. Pinky toe edge, outer heel. Heel down, toes up. Inner edge, big toe ball joint, outer heel. Toes down, heel up. 
right, foot on the ground, feel. Stand and feel. Okay, one more foot exercise. So flip your right foot over so the top of your foot goes down. I'm gonna turn a little bit sideways, yep, so you can see top of the foot down. You may need to bend quite a bit into your knee joint, flex a little bit into the hip joint. <clears throat> it may be tender too. You may need some padding a little bit more than the yoga mat and your flooring. Maybe you've got to toss a towel down or a washcloth or a pillow to lay the top of the foot down. And then with the top of the foot pressing down, try to isometrically drag it forward. So when you do that, you're gonna feel muscles in your leg engage. You might even feel a little bit of like core activity. Okay, and then release. Stand, check it out, how you feel to be here. How are you feeling about working through your feet? <laughs> You're like, I didn't show up for this. I want to do warrior two. We'll get there. All right, so let's do the other one. All right, so left foot, top of the foot down. So you have total permission to come in and out of this shape. You know, you can put the top of the foot down, be like, okay, that's all I can tolerate. And then flip the foot back to standing and then reapproach top of the foot down. Remember that, and two, you've got props, right? You've got things around the house. You can drop on the floor to get underneath your foot if it feels really tender or intense, right? So we want to soften that sensation a little bit and give some cushioning. A couple more breaths here, and we're going to add pressing the top of the foot down and then isometrically dragging your foot forward. When you do that, you're gonna feel some muscles turn on in your legs. Again, you might feel a little bit more uh, stability kick on through center, right? The cylinder of center, pelvic floor, respiratory diaphragm, the internal and external obliques, the abdominal wall muscles, right? Rectus abdominis, transversus abdominis. Yeah, they all might turn on. Perfect, but they'll turn on just a little bit. They won't overdo it. Okay, and then finish. Woohoo! Stand and feel. You just did some major work. All right, take a big breath up. Exhale, have a seat chair pose, and then in breath and rise. Exhale and release your arms. Step your feet out wide, even turn out. So you can turn out. Yeah, take a big breath up. Plie down, so goddess shape. And then in breath, rise. Step in back to neutral. In breath, rise. Exhale, sit chair, in breath, stand up, exhale, release your arms, step out, second position, right, turning the feet out to goddess pose, tracking your knees, take a big breath up, let your knees track through the center of your ankles, maybe through your second and fourth toe, somewhere in that line, and then exhale, release your arms, one more time between those two shapes, in breath, rise, <clears throat> exhale, chair, in breath, stand up, exhale, release, step out wide, again, you can turn the feet out if that feels good, Reach up, exhale, have a seat. <laughs> nice plie down with the torso rising. Release your arms, step your feet in. Okay, to the top of our mats. More movement now through the spine. In breath, reach up big. Exhale, chair pose, fold forward, Uttanasana. In breath, look up and get long. Exhale, fold into your legs. Step your right foot back for a lunge. Right foot back, low lunge. Right foot forward, left foot back, low lunge. Breathe. Step your left foot forward. Bring your hands to your pelvis. Steady legs. Foot contact with earth, long spine, rise. Release your arms. Let's go again, reach up. Exhale, chair, fold forward, Uttanasana. This time, step back to plank. <clears throat> Breathing in plank. From plank up to downward facing dog. Bend your knees and down dog. Tip your sitting bones skyward. In breath, plank. Exhale, dog. Take a dog where you can open up the space a little bit more through your torso, right? So sometimes that means changing the leg shape. 
You know, the knees can stay bent as the sitting bones tip to the sky. And then from the bottom of your heart, extending and staying lifted. So you're not collapsing your heart to the earth. You're not collapsing your armpits to the earth. You're staying lifted. And there's a push of your hands that allows you to discover a little bit more space. It's like you're tractioning out through the trunk. One more time, inhale forward to plank. Breathe. A lot of strength here, right? Exhale to dog. All right, with the knees bent, let's start with the legs, moving the shins in and the inner thighs out with your sitting bones tipped. Begin pressing your thigh bones back towards your hamstrings to open up the shape now from the legs. So you still have that commitment through your torso into your hands. Two more breath cycles. So if I said one more plank to dog, what would your attitude be about that? We're not going to do it. <laughs> We're going to inhale forward to plank. Option is knees down, lower all the way down onto your belly. Inhale up, cobra. Legs strong. Tops of the feet, you've opened them. Press them down. Open your toes up. Really press the tops of your feet down. Heart moves forward to lower yourself down. Push up to all fours. Check out where your knees are, yeah, under their pelvis. Check out your hands. They could be a little forward of the shoulders or under them. Spaced about pointer finger, thumb. They, the width of your pointer finger and thumb is the outer edge of your shoulders. So check it out. And then step your right leg back, toes tucked under this time. So now stretching through the bottom of your right foot with toes tucked under. Keep your right foot on the ground and keep the reach from right pelvis to right foot so that you do feel some active opening through the right leg. Extend your left arm forward. Yeah, so we've just added a little balance. Right foot still on the ground. So if you've lifted your right leg or if you've stopped pushing with your right foot on the ground, get busy with that. Foot on the ground, push into your right foot. Yeah, okay, left hand down, right knee down. Let's go to the second side. Left foot steps back, toes tucked under. We're keeping the foot on the ground. It's an amazingly awesome articulation through the foot that you're working on, right? The toe hinge, breathe. So sustaining this feeling of a push, right? From pelvis, left side of the pelvis into left big toe ball joint and baby toe ball joint. Right? What do you feel back there? Do you mostly just feel big toe? Can you feel the width of your foot from big toe to baby toe and what's in contact with the earth? Eventually, you know, we're working for that whole aspect of the foot to be able to hinge. Right arm forward, left foot still on the ground, still practicing the push. Breathe. Right hand down, left knee down. Hands, one hand print forward, toes tuck. Push with your feet, push with your hands. Tip your pelvis up and back, moving towards downward facing dog. Open your dog over several breath cycles. So just delight in the small shifts you might make, the changes you'll make to express your downward facing dog just a little bit differently. So it feels different. And you continue to have an attitude of welcoming the shape, welcoming the experience of being in your body, feeling the sensations of what it's like to be living in your body. You know, oftentimes, so many of us, like we just reject it. Like we just reject, like, oh, I'm in pain, right? I don't like my hair. We reject the experience of being in our body. So we're in an exploration of like, how do we welcome, how do we shift the attitude of welcoming of this amazing vessel that we reside in? Okay, walk your feet forward. 
Standing forward fold, bend your knees. Bow in, bow in to your own greatness. Yeah. And you know what? You don't have to do anything to be great. You're here. The genius and the intelligence of your own life force is the great thing. <laughs> in breath, look up, get long. Exhale, fold back into you. Two more times, legs steady, strong, lengthening your spine on the inhale, maybe even looking out or up. And then exhale, fold. You could bend your knees when you fold so that your chest comes closer to your legs, maybe even rests on your thighs. How about one more time? Breathe from a little bit of extension. Breathe into flexion. Bend your knees, hands to pelvis. Heart moving forward, rise. Release your arms. All right, left foot forward, right leg back, high lunge, lunges up high. A little bit more balance here, right? You don't have hands on the ground. <laughs> In breath, reach your arms up. Shoot your thumbs a little bit higher to the sky to help lift your back waist. Now get playful. Can you let your pelvis go down? Yeah, that'll require head of the left shin bone to go forward a really awesome toe hinge in the back foot. Exhale, release your arms. Big swooping step, right foot forward, stand. Let's go for the second side, hands to pelvis, left foot back, high lunge. Make it big. You gotta sometimes ask yourself, you know, when you're a little hesitant on your shape, you know, what's holding you back from making the shape bigger? It's usually, you know, something in your head, part of the attitude. In breath, arms up. Make it big. Breathe. Sink your pelvis down. I know it's weird. Going down actually makes the shape bigger, right? So pelvis heavy, but legs steady. Yes. Head of the right shin bone forward. To get that, you've got to have an excellent toe hinge through the back foot. Another breath cycle. Exhale, arms down, hands to pelvis. Step forward. Release your arms. Breathe. In breath, reach up. Chair pose. Fold forward, Uttanasana. Step back to downward facing dog. Reveal your dog. Let your downward facing dog be an expression of the attitude of your own heart. So, you know, our hearts don't force things, uh, right? You know, a true energetic heart. It's just the unconditional lover. <laughs> so continue to play in your dog. Any aspect that you want to explore through movement, shifts and changes in your dog. Explore them. Sometimes those shifts and changes are big. You know, you want to take big shifts and changes in movements. Other times they might be really intricately quiet. All right, on your next in-breath, come forward to plank. Breathe here. Keep using your hands and feet. Pushing the earth. Option is knees down, lower down to your belly. Shoulders to the height of your elbows, heart forward, Bhujangasana. Commit to your legs, awesomeness of tops of the feet down. Breathe. Heart forward, return to the earth. Press up to fours. Line your hands up underneath your shoulders so they probably need to step back a little bit. Right arm out to the side and then push a little bit more with your left arm so you open your twist. So you're turning to the right. Now push more with your left arm to spin your left ribs to the right. All right, now dive through. Thread your needle. Right arm threads underneath your torso, head down, laying on the right side of your head, left elbow to the sky. If 
Left leg steps back, toes tucked. Use your powerful push. Keeping the energy in your left leg. Left leg up. Optional left arm up. What's holding you back from expressing the shape just a little bit more? You know, it could be just opening your toes, right? Opening your fingers a little wider. Could be a reach, a stronger reach from pelvis to left heel. Could be a stronger reach from your heart to your left arm. Could be a greater press down of the right arm, the whole right arm, including the back of the right hand out through your fingers. Left hand down, left knee down. Push with your left hand. Come out of your twist, back to fours. Right hand stays down now. It's about quarter finger thumb, outer width of shoulder. Pushing with your right hand, left arm to the T. And then turn your right ribs to the left. So you're opening up a twist. Push strongly with the right arm. Not so that you lock the right elbow out. Yeah, a locking joint is no fun. You don't get anywhere. One more breath. Take an exhale, left arm threads through. Thread your needle. Right elbow to the sky. Right leg steps back, toes tucked. Breathe. So already this push from the right foot is gonna give you the stability through center. Right leg airborne. Optional right arm up. And as you breathe here, what's the potential of expressing the shape just a little bit more? Easy, easy ones are like just fingers and toes, right? They're not gonna throw balance off too much to open up fingers and toes. Also pressing down through your left arm, the whole back of the left arm, even into the hand, the back of the left hand. That's gonna help with balance too. Now the reach from pelvis to heel, the reach from your heart to your fingertips going skyward. Those are big, go for them. All right, right hand down, right leg down. Back to your knees, untwist fours, all fours. Hands, work a handprint forward, toes tuck. Push with your hands and feet, downward facing dog. Walk forward, standing forward fold. Bow in. Release your head. Legs steady. Hands to pelvis. Length through your spine. Rise. Release your arms. Okay, we're going to go into some kneeling shapes. So if you need something to kneel on, grab it. I've got some little kneeling pads. You can use pillows and blankets. You have stuff around that can offer a nice cushioning for knees. All right, stand well at the top of your mat. In breath, reach up. Clasp your hands back behind you as you exhale down. So bend your elbows, tail draws down, heart lifts up. Yeah, opening through the front of the chest. Release your arms, reach up again. Fold forward, Uttanasana. Right leg back, lunge. If you need something underneath your right knee, put it in place. Right knee down. Top of the right foot down. Work your hands to your left thigh. Walk your hands back towards your pelvis. Yep, so you're coming up into a lunge with back knee down. In breath, arms up. Head of the left shin bone forward more. Now let your pelvis be heavy. Next breath, take your arms, make a 
circle and clasp your hands behind your back. Bend your elbows. Draw your tail down. Lift up through your own heart. Next breath. Both hands to the mat. Tuck your toes on your back foot. Pick your back knee up. We'll be switching sides. Step forward with your right foot. Step back with your left. If you've got a prop for your back knee, adjust. Back knee down. Top of the back foot down. Breathe. Bring both hands up onto your top thigh. Yep. Press down through the top of your back foot like you're isometrically pulling it forward. Let your pelvis be heavy. In breath, arms up, big reach. Circle your arms back behind you, clasp your hands, bend your elbows, draw your tail down, lift up through your heart. Next breath, release your hands, bow forward. Pick up your back leg, step it forward to a standing forward fold. Legs strong, big breath up, rise, reach, hands to heart. Checking in with how you're feeling, what's your attitude? How does it feel to be in your body? Experiencing the sensations of you moving through space, being alive. All right, release your hands. Let's take a wide stance. Nice wide stance. Right foot's gonna be our lead foot. So turn your right foot open, turn your left foot slightly in, stretch both arms up, come into your knee bend, go into warrior two. Find the outer edge of your back foot. You worked your edges at the beginning of class. Find the pinky toe edge of your back foot and root it down. Rotate the head of your front arm bone, reverse your warrior. To let your pelvis get heavy, right? So the shape's gonna get bigger. The more you can commit to the pinky toe edge of your back foot, will give you the opportunity to move the head of the front leg shin bone forward, and that'll help your pelvis sink down. The shape will get bigger even though you're going down. And then from your heart up through your fingertips, express out. What quality of your heart are you expressing in this moment? Okay, next breath, side angle. Right into a big side angle. What's going to hold you back from taking a big shape? What's your biggest expression of the moment? Go for it. Top hand to pelvis. Front leg lengthens, trikonasana. Go for it. Open the shape up. Still the same stuff applies, you know? Can you find the back leg, pinky toe edge, and commit to it? That's going to lift. When you find that, that's going to lift the inner thigh on the back leg which gives you the space to scoop your right buttock in and under. And then you can turn your ribs open, bottom ribs, right ribs turning forward, top ribs drawing back. One more breath here in your triangle pose, expressing your shape. Left hand down, turn towards your front leg, bend your front knee, turn your back toes in the direction of your right toes. So you're facing the bottom of your mat now in a low lunge. Push with your right foot, step your left foot forward. Standing forward fold, bow in, breathe. Legs steady, hands to pelvis, rise. Release your arms, all right. 
looking in a new direction. What's it look like over here? What do you see? How do you feel about what you see? You know, sometimes I look in these other directions. I'm like, oh, I got to dust, clean out that corner. <laughs> Forget it. Worry about it later. From here, wide stance. So we're stepping back out to a wide stance. Step out. Yeah. Good. This time we'll be turning to the left. So our right foot turns first. That's the back foot. Right foot turns in. Left foot turns open. Reach both arms up as you pull your feet towards each other. Keeping the strength in your legs. Bend your front knee. Arms out, warrior two. All right, we know there's something about the edges of our feet that's important. And particularly in the back foot, it's that pinky toe edge. Yeah, stay grounded through the back leg. Rotate the head of the left arm bone, front arm, so the palm goes to the sky, reverse your warrior. Breathe. Let your pelvis sink. Let your pelvis go down. How does it go down? Right? A stand of the back leg, particularly the back edge. Head of the left shin bone forward more. Meanwhile, you're arcing back more. Right? So you've got these oppositional movements going on. Complementary opposites. One more breath. Right, right into side angle, you guys. Right into it. Right into your fullest expression. Go for it. You don't need to fiddle faddle, right? You go, this is my fullest expression for today. Go. Two more breaths here in side angle pose. Stand in your back foot, lengthen your front leg, trikonasana, triangle pose. We're calling the pinky toe edge of your back foot. Yeah, that commitment is gonna create the lift and the spaciousness at the back leg inner thigh. That little bit of space that you get is what allows you to scoop your left buttock underneath you just a little bit more. And it's all micro movements, right? Left ribs come forward, top ribs draw back, breathe. Next exhale, both hands down to the mat. So we're pivoting to a low lunge facing the top of your mat. Left knee will bend, both toes, both feet, all 10 toes are pointing towards the top of your mat, back heel lifted. Breathe, step into your left foot, right foot swings forward. Exhale, bow in. Bring your hands to your pelvis, in breath, and rise. Release your arms down. Stretch up big. Exhale, have a seat, fold forward, Uttanasana, step back, down dog. In breath, plank. Exhale, lower to your belly. Rest your left hand underneath your head, make a pillow. Bend your right knee. Left leg extended, left leg grounded, right knee bent. Take your right hand, reach back for your right foot. If you're not able to get your foot, go for clothing, grab clothes. Bend your right elbow. Take the head of your right bar arm bone up and away from the earth. Yep. Nice quad stretch. One more breath. Okay, and then release. Let's go for the other side. So right leg stays long and grounded, left knee bends. Move the head of your left arm bone back. That's gonna help give you the space you need to take your left hand back. Reach for your foot, reach for clothing, take hold of something. Bend your left elbow. Breathe.
release. All right, let's go again. So this time, left hand, go to ridge tops, right? So you're gonna be able to push up with your left hand, right knee bends. Yeah, reach back for your right foot, maybe grab close. Use your left hand pushing down, press the front of your chest up as you push your right foot away. So you're taking half bow. Breathe. Keep spreading your toes, pushing your foot away. All right, exhale, lower down. Last one, last time. Right hand, ridge tops, right elbow up. Bend your left knee. You're gonna be using your right hand to press your chest up in a moment, so get a good position. Maybe you have to adjust where your right hand is. Holding either your clothing or your left foot, left ankle, bend your left elbow. Move the head of your left arm bone back. Push with your right hand to lift your torso up. Press your left foot away. Left foot pushing away, hand resisting. Breathe. Two more breaths. Next breath, lower all the way down. Yeah, place your hands underneath your forehead, windshield wiper your legs. All right, legs down, hands by your chest, push up to fours. You've got your kneeling props, yeah? Go ahead and place one for your right knee, all right? Right knee down, left foot forward, low lunge. Come on up, rise up. Try placing the top of the foot down, pressing from the top of the foot down, pulling the foot forward. Take the head of the left shin bone, move it forward, let your pelvis sink. In breath, raise your arms up. Circle your arms back, clasp them behind your back, lift your heart up. Okay, release that. Bend your right knee, see if you can take hold of some part of your right foot. Maybe you've got clothing, right? Grab what you got. Bend your right elbow. Move the head of your right arm bone back. In breath, left arm up. Breathe. Turn your belly button towards your left inner knee. Take one more breath. Exhale, left hand down, right leg releases. Both hands down. Back to kneeling, all fours. All right, so left knee is going to be the knee on the ground this time. So if you've got a kneeling prop, switch it over to your left knee. And then right foot forward, low lunge. Yeah, pelvis has got to be heavy here. How do we get the pelvis heavy? We're going to use the feet. <laughs> feet grounding. So it's top of the left foot pressing down. Pull four corners, right? The four corners of your front foot rooting. All right, pelvis heavy, walk yourself upright. In breath, arms up, belly back, arm circle, clasp your hands behind you. Head of the arm bones back, heart lifted. Yeah, you did this earlier. Breathe. All right, release your arms, just let them dangle. Bend your left knee, reach back with your left hand, take hold of your left foot. And if you're like, ah, getting the foot's crazy on this side, grab clothes. Right? Or just bend the knee. Just take the general form of the shape. All right, so let's let the pelvis sink a little bit more. Push your left foot away. Your hand resists. Head of the right shin bone forward. Right arm up. Turn your belly button towards your right inner knee and breathe. This will make you sweat, right? <laughs> I hate to even ask, like, what's your attitude here? <laughs> okay, right hand down, left leg down, hands to the ground. Yeah, those shapes are big. Good work. All right, both knees down to all fours. Let's take downward facing dog. Open your dog. Breathe. Take the fullness of your shape. To get there, you can be playful, right? It doesn't have to be rigid how you get to the fuller down dog shape. Couple more breath cycles. Discovering a fuller shape, finding your way. With breath being the primary. Right, 
both knees down, have a seat, have a seat, stretch both legs out. Use your fingertips back behind you. I'm just gonna turn on an angle so you can see. Yep, so fingertips back behind you. Bend your elbows, look for your heart. So you've been practicing this shape throughout class. Okay, and then release. Get on top of you, draw your left knee into your chest and just hug it in. Left foot crosses over right. Again, hug in. So you're already set up for a, a twist. You don't have to go too far here. Just turning your belly towards your left inner thigh. You're there, you're in the twist. A little bit more dedication to your right leg grounding. Left arm up, breathe. Back stroke, left arm in the back plane, land hands on the ground, elbow bends. Move the head of your left arm bone back. Move your head. Any position that you go, there it is. You know, you could look back, you could look forward, you could look down, you could look up. Check it out, which one do you like? On an in-breath, come out of your twist, uncross your legs, sit both legs long and out in front of you, stretch both arms up, big reach, so you got arms extended, legs extended, spine extended, big shape here, come on, press the thigh bones back, press your heels down, open your toes and fingers up, bigger expression. All right, when you exhale to put your hands on the ground, don't collapse. Hands down, right? Keep, keep the, the large expression of you, the presence of you. All right, bend your elbows, lift your heart up. Get back into a little bit of a seated back bend extension. All right, and then back on top of you. This time, right knee, hug it in. Just holding the right knee, hugging it into your chest. Yeah, single knee to chest. Do your best to... Be on top of your sitting bones rather than tipped back towards your sacrum. You know, if this is your side where it's a little tricky, you just putting a prop underneath your bottom, right? A yoga block's kind of big. You could sit on a yoga block, a blanket. Uh, the, the stuff you used for kneeling might give you enough height, right? To give you the tip of the pelvis you're looking for. All right, right foot crosses the midline. Now you've got the spiraling going on through your body. And as you hug your right knee to your chest, you're already in a twist. Your belly, yeah, and your ribs are already turning. You're already there. So breathe here. Give a little bit more commitment to your extended leg. Grounding action. And you can work that from the heel all the way up through the back of the leg. You're skilled. You know what that feels like. In breath, right arm up, big reach. Yeah, so as your right side of your pelvis anchors up through the right side waist. Back stroke, land your right arm in the back plane, immediately bend your elbow. Take the head of your right arm bone back. This will just, just that action takes you a little bit deeper into the twist. And now, you know, it's the end point of the twist. It's the head, right? The top of the spine. What do you want to do with your head? <laughs> you, you can't say, I, I want to chop it off, right? That's not going to work. So, you know, what, what feels good? Does it feel good to look backwards? You can look forwards, you can look up, you can look down. The only way you know what you like and what your attitude is about that expression is you go explore it. You know, you go wondering, wondering, like I wonder what that would feel like.
you're going to find as you wonder, you're going to find something there where you go, oh yeah, that's, that's it. That's so nice for me today, right now. Enjoy that. Enjoy that breath. Enjoy that recognition. Noticing your attitude towards the shape that you've taken. The posture. God, we're always posturing in life, aren't we? <laughs> All right, here we go. Use an in-breath. Come out of your twist. Bend both knees. Get to the middle of your mat. Hold on to your hamstrings and recline. Figure four, right leg, cross it over. Let's do an outer hip stretch. Hug your left knee in and then adding the hamstring stretch. So left leg long. Breathe. Left knee bends, left foot on the ground, right leg on crosses, second side, figure four. Right knee to chest, add the hamstring stretch on the right leg, so lengthening from right sitting bone to right heel. Breathe. Right knee bends, right foot on the ground, left foot down. Arms to a T, take both knees, drop them right, turn your head, look left. Squeeze your legs together, second side, knees drop left. Head turns right. In breath center. Last time, knees in. You can also journey on over to happy baby or just stay with knees to chest. You know, what feels better? And, you know, to know what feels better, you got to try both of them. Maybe they both feel good. <laughs> Maybe you're like, wow. Such simple stuff. And I like them both. As you're ready, bringing your legs back to the earth. Eventually, legs extend, arms extend. We're in a constant cycle of um, action followed by rest. And our attitude towards action and rest can shift throughout the day, you know, we can, we can have an attitude of, oh, I can't wait, I'm so excited to go do this thing. Or we can have an attitude towards action of like, I really don't want to do that. Oh. Similar to rest. Sometimes when we go to sit or lay down to rest. We very much welcome it with our attitude. We're like, oh yeah, exactly what I need right now. And then other times when rest is necessary, we fight it. We, we you know, are trying to do one or two more things. In this moment, you've had a lot of action proceeding. 
to just give yourself over to the rest. 